What's up everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Uh, you'll have to excuse the shirt today, I just went out to eat so I was kind of dressed up. And it's one of those shirts where it needs like an in-between button right here, you know? Like if I button the top button, I look sort of like a yuppie or kind of like a priest actually. Um, but if I button this button, then I look like some kind of uh, guy that like is trying to hit on your girlfriend at the end of the night at a nightclub or something. So you'll just have to excuse me. I'm going to go with this collar look here tonight. So the criteria I looked for in order to make these warm-ups is that they have to be repetitive in nature. That means you don't stop and start a lot. You have to be able to keep flowing with it. And they have to be complex enough to give you a little bit of a challenge to kind of, you know, get the fingers moving, get the blood flow, and that's the whole point of a warm-up, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with one of the easier ones. This is a uh, Pretty Woman. And these aren't exactly played the way the artist played them all the time. Sometimes I modified them just a little bit to make them a little bit more effective as a warm-up. Okay, so I've seen them played like this before. Where you utilize the open D string. But a really good way to make this a warm-up is to actually go like this. Now this crosses three strings, so it's a little complex, but you know, you really get moving, you can do alternate picking and it really helps the right hand warm up as well. One of the first riffs I ever learned was Crazy Train and uh, the way Randy Rhodes does it, he uses his pinky. I've seen some people play it like this, kind of like Pretty Woman with open strings. Seems kind of weird and then this. It's not quite as effective as a warm-up unless you really just use your pinky. Now, what's great about this is you can actually just do this on two strings. So you end up with a really great pinky exercise, especially at the end when you really have to do this pinky to ring finger back and forth trade-off. Sorry, I got a super metal tone going today. So it's a great riff. You could play it anywhere you want. You know, I don't really play it in the right uh, pitch as the band. I start low and then I climb up as I go. Now here's what it is slow. I'll do all downstrokes, okay? So I'd start off like that with downstrokes. Then I would go to alternate picking and it gets really interesting. See, it's a lot like Crazy Train where you have to use the third and fourth fingers quite a bit. That's very important. After a while, I'm speeding up. I'm moving up the neck. And before you know it, you're up on the higher frets going pretty fast. And it's uh, such a great dexterity exercise for both hands. Plus, it's a cool riff. But, of course, Dream Theater would have great riffs for exercises just because Petrucci is such a technician. So let's go ahead and do part of a Rodomania. I remember when I first learned this, I'm like, this is just a really great warm up because you're moving around and you're utilizing all four fingers, kind of like the spider exercise that I teach. <laughs> Okay, so there's sort of a strange time signature for that. You don't have to do that, but I just like to keep it true to the song. But you can see if you just go back and forth and you can work your way up as much as you want, I just kind of stay to the lower frets for this one. Then you can alternate pick. So you get dual benefit for all these riffs if you start to utilize different types of picking. First time I ever played Jump in the Fire by Metallica, uh, it was very challenging because I wasn't that good and here I am trying to play this crazy three string run. And uh, if you get to know it, it's very useful because it's utilizing the blues scale in a really great way. And then you could do palm muting as well if you do all downstrokes. So you can go. All right, that's if you want to finish the riff off or you could just keep doing that same run over and over again and move it up if you want to. I also used to do alternate picking. You could still palm mute and do that. That's very challenging. It's a little bit of a different feeling to have to do alternate picking with mutes. All right. And like I said before, you can move it around if you want to. You can even play it up high. Either way, great exercise. And it utilizes a scale that you're going to be using quite a bit. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play parts of a part of ashes in your mouth that goes like this. So 
it's the spider, but it moves in contrary motion halfway through and it comes backwards. Very strange. Now speeding that up could be sort of a task, so you want to take it real slow at first, all right? So if you're following the tab, just stay, uh, stay with me for a second. We're going to start at the 7th fret, climb chromatically up to the G, skip to the next string, go back a fret, climb up from there, and then we're going to move up two frets, and then we're going to do a descending pattern. So we're going to go... Then the descending part... It's really interesting to see how much your hands can stay in sync when it's moving like that, especially at a fast speed. Then you slowly, of course, speed it up, and pretty soon you can get it pretty consistent. By the way, I'm just moving up half a step each time, adding more to the chromatic feel of it, okay? Now, a big thing you want to do, you might not be able to hear that with distortion, but I'm really accenting the first of every four, so I'm going da 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 which keeps me on the beat. It's very important. Okay, so a little faster. What you're going to get now is a little bit of a stretch, and you get to decide how you want to do this, depending on the best way for you. So we're going to do the message in the bottle riff. I'm actually going to keep it distortion, uh, but I'm going to mute it, so it's going to sound like this. That sounds crappy. Let me bring up the gain and mute some more. As you can see, this is a good warm up because you're doing these big stretches, these add nine power chords. Really great sounding. Uh, you could also use your ring finger. And to tell you the truth, I'm doing that more and more these days because then you get the power chord feel and you just have to reach up for that add nine note. So let's take this a little bit slow. I'm gonna use my ring finger this time. We start off on the C sharp and we go. Move to the A. To the B. To the F sharp and then slide up half a step at the end. Okay, so here we go, a little faster. Okay, now you're ready to move around a little bit. And uh, I took the Thunderstruck lick in the beginning and I did all hammer-ons and pull-offs. That way it's kind of flashy. You know, you're not using your right hand at all, but it's a great way to get moving around the neck a little bit. And just by modifying a little bit, you can actually use all your fingers. So some people go like this when it gets to the big descending part, they go. And they start with their ring finger, but just for this warm up, I'm gonna use my pinky. So I end up going like this. Now without the right hand at all, or the picking hand. Now the challenge is to keep it in time. So you really have to get your fingers to accent on their own. So a lot of heavy hammer-ons at first, and then real articulate pull-offs. Then when you speed it up, it sounds more uniform. I hear a lot of this. Just a lot of scattered notes. Make sure it's very smooth and straightforward and in the grid, if you will. And the next one's by a local band called Power Mad. And I remember one of the first times I went to uh, First Avenue, they were headlining, and it was real exciting to kind of see a local band doing well. Anyways, this song's called Nice Dreams. And it's kind of an obscure tune, but I remember using this as a, as a warm-up because, number one, I loved economy picking, and two, I love the stretch that I did. So like I said earlier, when you have to do these huge stretches up high on the neck, I'll sometimes go to my middle finger instead of my ring. That's going to be the case here, okay? So just follow the tab, but I'm going to show you how I play it. First of all, with just regular picking. <laughs> So it's a great warm-up because it's very circular. You could just keep that going. Speaking of circular, economy circular picking, we're going to now take our picking hand and we're going to actually push it through the strings in a very interesting way. So we're not going to down pick everything. We're not going to alternate pick everything. We're going to do economy picking. And I'll highlight the picking scheme on the tab, all right? So here's what we have. <laughs> See how at the end we're at back at a downstroke? That's what makes it such a perfect warm-up. All right, then you can start to bring it up in speed a little bit. All 
All right, everyone, hopefully you can make some of these riffs your warm-ups from now on and have a more musical way to warm up versus just doing, you know, angular exercises or spider or whatever. Uh, so see if you can make something musical, a warm-up, and uh, you'll sound great while you're getting ready for a show. It's a win-win situation. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks.